This is the process by which acid rain is formed. SO2 emissions from factories condense and combine with water which then fall down as rain. Glass bottle. Triple beam balance. Thermometer. Red litmus paper. Blue litmus paper. Magnesium ribbon. Plastic strip. Conductivity tester. 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Sulfur. 0.1 molar NaOA. We are now weighing the mass of the glass bottle by itself. The mass of the glass bottle by itself is 371.4 grams. There's a sign on the wall, but she wants to be sure, cause you know sometimes... We are now recording the mass of the watch glass. The mass of the watch glass by itself is 20.3 grams. We're pouring 50 milliliters of distilled water into the glass bottle. We are now igniting a pea-sized piece of sulfur. We are now placing the lit sulfur into the glass bottle. We are covering the glass bottle with cover glass in order to keep the smoke from escaping. As you can see, the glass bottle becomes cloudy. This is because the SO2 gas is being released into the glass bottle. When I place my hand on the glass bottle, the bottle has become cold. This signifies an endothermic reaction. As you can see, an abundance of SO2 gas is being produced in the glass bottle. Now we are removing the deflagrating spoon and quickly placing the cover glass back over the glass bottle in order to retain as much SO2 gas as possible. Now we are removing the sulfur from the deflagrating spoon.
um, we are now disposing the sulfur into a waste container. We are now beginning to shake the glass bottle with the SO2 gas and liquid inside. While making sure to hold onto the cover glass tightly so no SO2 escapes, the SO2 and water react. We are now taking the mass of the glass bottle, the cover glass, and the acid rain together. The total mass is 419.9 grams. In order to get the density, we subtracted the mass of the glass bottle from the total mass and divided by 15 milliliters. As you can see,